Hello everyone, I am Aman Kapali, master's student at Turban Testing Lab under the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Kathmandu University. And it is my pleasure to present paper in this International Symposium named Current Research in High Power Technology, share STX, that is the 10th person. The paper is entitled Experimental and CFD Study of Influence of Sediment Sites on Efficiency of Hydrocyclone for Use as Self Filtration Device. And the authors are uh, Aman Kapali. Mr. Atmaram Kaisa, Dr. Sadish Chitrakar, Mr. Objik Shrestha, and Dr. Haripa Satnipani. Presentation covers the following contents Introduction that comprises problem outline, sediment characteristic, laboratory erosion test strip, and about the solid liquid separation, that is the hydrocyclone design and model. Secondly, numerical simulation of the hydrocyclone, that is followed by experimental investigation, results, and discussion. And lastly, the conclusion part. We are well known about the fact that sediment erosion is most prevailing problem in hydro plants that runs on the sediment laden rivers originating from the Himalayas, the Andes and the Pacific coast ranges. To prevent the sediment from entering into the turbine, commonly gravity settling basins with flushing arrangements are used as a filtration device. However, the result is not so compromising as turbine and other components are severely eroded mainly in the monsoon season when the sediment concentration in the river is generally high. This existing system can be obligated to enhance its traffic efficiency in expense to high cost and other technical reasons. But various limiting factors like topographical condition, cost of shutdown or generation loss during flushing, repair and maintenance cost and initial cost needs to be taken into consideration. Taking into this account, the paper has attempted to investigate the feasibility to use hydrocyclone based on its efficiency to separate different size particles. Also, the study taken, takes into consideration the use of hydrocyclone in developing non recirculating type of erosion test rig to conduct the erosion related research. And let's briefly talk about the sediment and its characteristic. Sediments are actually the inorganic compounds present in water in the form of clay, seal, sand, gravels, and it can be categorized based on its shape, density, hardness, and size. These characteristics are solely responsible to alter the rate and mechanism of the erosions. In this paper, high cyclone performance is evaluated by considering the sediment size as erosion influencing factor. The table 1 shows the classification of the sediment based on its size. Usually, the sediment particles having high mass value have the high terminal velocity and tends to settle at higher rate while flowing from the upstream to the downstream. And past literature also shows that the sediment size slowly decreases as the sediment flows from the headwork to the downstream in higher power plants. It is evident that the size less than 200 microns can easily pass through the turbine and cause serious damage in the medium and higher power plants despite the use of settling basins and other trapping systems. For instance, the design of the settling basin of a Kaligandiki A higher power plants. 145 megawatt is based on the criteria as shown in the table 2. Despite 70% of the trapping efficiency for the sediment size larger than 100 micron, that is 0.1 mm, each Francis Ryanair has faced serious damage as shown in the figure 2. Apart from the Use of hydrocyclone in high power plants. This study presented it viably to use in developing laboratory erosion testing. These erosion testings are developed to conduct the erosion related researches like locating possible erosion surfaces, testing erosion resistivity of material, predicting life of turbine, and studying erosion patterns. Such tricks are developed in such a way that erosion influencing factors such as sediment size, concentration, shape, low velocity, material properties can be varied and controlled in lab conditions. However, it is difficult to simulate actual operating conditions in lab in Basically, this laboratory erosion tests can be classified into recirculating type and non-recirculating type. In recirculating type, the sediment is mixed up with water in a tank and circulated throughout the test duration in a closed loop. In this case, the erosion rate increases at the beginning and then it starts diminishing afterwards. This is due to the loss of angularity of the sediment after having continuous contact with the specimen also known as a slurry aging process. Whereas in the case of non recirculating type of erosion testing, fresh sediment is fed into the system 
via independent sediment injection system and use sediments after passing through the specimen is ejected out of the system by the use of sediment removal system like sand filter as shown in the figure 3. For solid liquid suppression, we have chosen the hydrocycling as filtration device. It is simply a mechanical device that is widely used in industrial application for separating solid from liquid and uh, solid from gas. This device has no moving parts and it consists of the cylindrical portion that is as a proconical section at the bottom. Usually a tensile, pollute or rectangular type of inlet is provided to fit the mixture into the system. Here we have chosen the tensile type of inlet. And the working principle of hydrocyclone is simply based on the concept of terminal settling velocity of the solid particles in the centrifugal field. That means metal that are denser than the carrier medium are forced to the wall and are removed from the outlet at the bottom of the device following a spiral path. And the selection of this device is based on the particle size that needs to be separated and the particle load present in the mixture, generally for the concentration less than 20%, hydrocycling can be a suitable option. For the hydrocycling design and model, two geometries of hydrocycling has been proposed by the Retima and the Bradley's. In this case, the Bradley's geometrical model is adopted over the Retima because past study shows that Retima geometry works efficiently for the force of particle while the Bradley geometry has higher separation efficiency for finer particles. For the design purpose, particles size to be separated is chosen to be 30 micro and the separation efficiency is 95%. And from the nomogram and the physical properties table shown in the figure 5, we use cosine diameter D50 that corresponds to the value of 19 micro and the characteristics diameter is 45 centimeter. Following the Bradley geometric ratios for modeling the hydrocyclone, other parameters is calculated as shown in the table. The model of the hydrocyclone is modified to obtain the best separation exchange after preliminary CFD analysis. The overflow pipe diameter is reduced from 15 centimeters to 12.5 centimeters and the underflow pipe diameter is reduced from 0.5 cm to 4 cm. For determining the theoretical separation efficiency of the particles of different sizes that passes through the hydrocyclone, the equation 1 developed by the Bennett is used. Here the term D represents the different size particles that is taken into the study and D50 term represents the Reduced cost side diameter that is 19 micron. Numerical analysis of the hydrocyclone is performed to calculate the efficiency of the hydrocyclone. Among the various available turbulence model, renal stress model is used as this model has a greater potential to accurately predict the complex flow phenomena like high swell with strong streamline curvatures that occurs in the hydrocyclone. Inlet mass flow boundary condition is set to 16 kg per second instead of the inlet velocity. Sediment concentration is kept constant that is 1000 ppm for the particle size varying from 19 to 100 micro. And shape factor of the particle is set to 1 assuming the spherical particles. And the average static pressure of 0 pascal is set at overflow pipe and underflow pipe. And no slip wall condition is added on the wall of separator, separator along with the wall's roughness value of 0.046 mm and number of injected particles is 1000 and the effect of surface tension is neglected. One way coupling method between water and solid particles is used for study and the effect of gravity is taken into account along the jet direction and the standard wall function is used to bridge the inner region between the walls and fully developed turbulence. Similarly, the experimental investigation is performed to study the influence of particle size and the separation efficiency. The figure 7 shows the layout of the experimental lid. Here, the mixing of the slurry is carried out by the mechanical agitator in the tank manually, and the centrifugal pump accelerates the mixer at a flow rate of 60 liter per second towards the circular inlet of hydrocyclone tangentially. The overflow pipe is discharged to a reservoir tank while the underflow pipe is drained out. The sediment concentration is kept constant 
at 1000 ppm while the particle size is varied to 60 micron, 160 micron, 250 micron and 50 microns. This segment size is screened using shifts of 0 to 100.5 microns, 100.5 to 212 microns, 212 microns to 300 microns and 300 to 400 microns to correlate the average particle size for experiment. And time samples of the distance from the inlet, underflow and overflow is taken, then dried, wet and recorded to calculate the concentration as mass per unit volume of the sample. Mass flow rate for the pipes are measured using the standard calculated basis and a stopwatch. Experimentally, the overall separation efficiency of the hydrocyclone is calculated using the equation 2. Here, the term MF, MC, and MU are the mass flow rate of the feet, mass flow rate of the particle collected from the overflow pipe and underflow pipe, respectively. Similarly, similarly for Calculating the efficiency for numerical simulations, equation 2 is used. From the result obtained from the numerical simulation, pressure and velocity distribution in hydrocyclone agrees with the literature from the past researches. From the figure 8, we can see the pressure decreases radially from wall towards the center, creating the negative pressure zone in the core outlet regions. This negative pressure is responsible for the flow through the overflow and underflow pipes. Since the hydrocyclone cannot accommodate the last flow rate through the underflow pipe, it is forced to move or escape through the overflow line. Likewise, high speed fluid enters the inlet and is accelerated up to 1.5 to 2 times the inlet velocity and then decreases as it moves towards the bottom of the hydrocyclone. Where the tangential velocity is zero on the wall and in the core region and this types the sediment particles from the downstream. Here figure 9 shows the topic of the particle velocity distribution when the sectional plane xx is caught at 0.1 meter from the top part of the hydrocyclone. Uh, it can be seen that the more particles escape from the overflow pipe with the decreasing particle size. This is due to the effect of the radial drag force that forces the particle to move towards the center core of the hydrocyclone and large size particle 168 micron is seen in negligible amount in overflow line. This is because of the high terminal velocity and centrifugal force that drives the particles towards the wall and finally escape from the bottom. A similar phenomenon is found from the experimental results. Large size particles escape in a faster rate from the bottom underflow pipes. And in contrast to the numerical results, few large size particles were seen to escape and collected from the overflow pipe. The reason behind this can be short circuiting of the flow near the inlet, that is, by passing the uh, large size particle directly towards the overflow pipe. Figure 11 shows the comparison chart of the separation efficiency for this particle size obtained from the theoretical calculation, CFT simulation, and experiment. Equation developed by the Bennett is used for calculating theoretical efficiency, whereas the equation 2 is used to calculate the separation efficiency for simulated and experimental part. Here, the chart shows that the theoretical efficiency is highest, whereas the simulated results and experimental results show comparative trend. The separation efficiency tends to increase with the decreasing particle size as the data in the table 3 clearly shows. And the deviation of the result between the CFD and experimental result may be due to the following reasons. In CFD, spherical particles that have set factor 1 is set as injected particles. These particles have lesser projected area than that of the irregular particles. Thus, they suffer less effect on the drag force and is less impact on the particle foot interaction and the second reason is no interaction or collision between the particles takes place in the CFT is considered. This case is not true during the experiment as particle collision intensity is proportional to the density or the particle concentration present in the system. Lastly, the performance study of the influence of particle size 
and the efficiency of hydrocyclone is conducted numerically and experimentally. For the particle size less than 200 microns that are considered most responsible to cause the erosion of the turbine and other components in the hydropower plant, separation efficiency of 96% and 88.8% is achieved numerically and experimentally. This means that very low amount of the sediment can escape through the system and helps in minimizing the erosion of the turbines. Likewise, the particle size greater than 200 microns can be excluded with the efficiency of 95%. Through the implementation of the hydrocyclone. Thus, the result clearly reveals that this device can be used as an alternative in hydropower plants as well as in developing the recirculating type of erosion test rig. This will certainly minimize the slurry aging process and helps to obtain the optimal condition for conducting the experiment that is related to the sediment erosion. Here are some of the references that are taken for the study. Thank you.